honest myself, in the past, I used to question God's existence every other day whenever I got up, woke up in the morning. I didn't want to, I didn't know what I was. I know I was already a Christian already, but I didn't fully believe because I doubted God a few times. It says, faith believeth, and all things are possible through Christ Jesus. Believe it. Amen. Now let me tell you, this lesson that I've been for you guys, I hope I don't take too long, but it's going to be a, this is a kind of a long lesson for myself, and this one was, um, I took it upon myself to make it a challenge, to answer some questions that I knew myself were hard to find, but when we first start reading, when we start to really look through God's literature, that He blessed us with, that He blessed man with the knowledge and understanding to make and write, really opens up all these questions that I'm about to answer. So, how do we know of God's existence? Why would we be created if God's perfect and we are imperfect? Why do we need Him? So, we as Christians and non-Christians believe and ask ourselves these questions. We all sometimes ask ourselves this to get a reality check on things. Like, what does this matter? Why am I on here? Why am I here on earth? These questions can also begin to make us doubt. So we ask ourselves, why do I believe this? We end up sitting, pause, no matter where we are, no matter what we do, and we sit and we ask ourselves this question yet again, and again, and again, searching for the answer. We'll sit there and contemplate for who knows what happened wrong. But then we also get down and ask ourselves this. If this is true, then how do we know God is? leads me into my lesson. First, let's look at a very wise man named King Solomon. If you all have your Bibles, I'd like you to please turn with me to Proverbs 2. Solomon, great King Solomon, one of the most wisest people in the Bible, other than Jesus Christ. He was blessed and was granted the gift of wisdom. Through him, we see a lot of things that come well, allow me to read. Chapter 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ears unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, Find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. God has given us wisdom for a purpose. Why do you think we go to school? We go to school, why? To get educated. We go to school to get educated, why? So we can be able to thrive and survive through the world, correct? We have to survive here and manage before we can have a chance to go anywhere else, right? That's why we all go to school, get a job, and after the job, and hopefully have a family and have a successful career and just be happy in the world. In the world, right? But now, we all have knowledge, right? We can always think of something. There's always philosophy. Philosophy is what allows one to question and use their own knowledge to be able to create their own theory which in turn says, I can prove myself right because I can. But now God has a different plan for us. According to King Solomon, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up not thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, we are to look in Scripture for that of knowledge of God. And it all depends on how we use our knowledge. Either it becomes wisdom or it becomes a weapon of destruction. <coughs> now, why am I saying this? How does this relate to how we're supposed to trust God? God gave us knowledge and wisdom so we can know who He is. So we can understand what He is doing for us. He gave us His word for our guidelines, for us to learn about Him, know about Him, and be able to understand His words. Why? The reason why His Holy Spirit is in us. And why 
time he actually exists, why we're here on earth. Which leads me into my next part. Let's go to chapter 3. Does not exist, but truly he does exist. Amen. Why do you think there is an earth? 
just because some stars collided and boom, there's gravity all of a sudden and bam, here's an Earth. With already water and plants and everything else on it, and living creatures, dinosaurs and whatnot, no, they were all placed here for a reason. And it might have been hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. But we all know it's God's purpose for us to know about this. He gave scientists the ability and the knowledge to see what they know. He gave Solomon the wisdom for a scientist and a well-known man. He gave all of his disciples the knowledge of wisdom from Jesus Christ, God's Son, to know of the existence of God. And for Jesus to be sacrificed on the cross, for us to see what he's done. Shed of pure blood. The blood of Jesus Christ to purify us. We may be saved from our sins and know the existence of God. People nowadays, they shun and shun the idea of God or even of church. Most people nowadays in society, they hate the idea of Christianity. Because why? They say that, oh, we can prove that he doesn't exist. He does exist. How do you think they can live to be and survive another day? How do we get to be able to have another breath of life? We survive for God. He has let us have the chance to understand and know He exists. Without Him, nothing is possible. But with Him, all things are possible. And by faith, believe that we survive and get to live for yet another day. Amen. Look at towards James. We look into James, and he talks about faith. Faith believe that he preached and taught strongly on faith. And we look back at Paul, back in the Romans. And also when he talks to the Galatian church about how faith is a cornerstone and what is a building block to allow us to see and understand what God has and is willing to do for us. We know he exists. If he didn't exist, why do we get all emotional whenever we hear God, when we get in the church? You know why? Because we have that Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit that is implanted in our hearts from that understanding and from the wisdom that we have. We have been given the knowledge to know that there is the existence of God. And we know there is the existence of Jesus Christ. You know why we know the existence? There's people doing documentaries on not just the Bible, but also on understanding that they may have found Joseph and Mary's tomb yeah. over in Jerusalem in the Middle yeah. East. Yeah. All right? Yeah. That's right. It is real. It's not fake. It's real. For a fact. Now, we may believe fact or fiction that they do not exist. But know this, God does exist. Whether you want to believe it or not, you can doubt it all you want. But you know, by the time you start to believe, God will create a circle of events, trials and tribulations. He will mold you to be able to let you see the light and understand you. Give you the knowledge and wisdom to know that He does exist. Things don't happen just because you let them happen. God makes them happen for a purpose. Believe it or not. I mean, I myself, I might be struggling in college. That's because I have issues with possibly doubting God. I mean, I'm taking a Christianity history class. It talks about a lot of theology. But let me tell you what. No matter what they teach, I know what I know is a fact. That He does exist. Can I get an amen or can yeah. I get an amen? Yeah. Right? Yeah. God does exist. Right. And he will show you what he has given you. He will show you the blessing. He will show you the knowledge. He will show you whatever he needs to show you. Make sure you understand that he is God. And God is God. You cannot deny it. No matter how hard you want to try. No matter what you do. No matter what happens in this life. You know God exists. You know that. Because you think about it all you want. You think about it right before you go to bed. You think about when you're just walking through a store or when you're walking through class. And somebody says, hi, how are you doing? Hope you're having a great day. And you're like, why would he say that? Why would she say that at all? Maybe they're trying to uplift you because God let them know that you're going to have a good day because of them. Understand that God created all of this. He created the sky. He created the birds. For us to see. Am I right? In Genesis chapter 1, God created the fowl of the earth. Of the beasts of the land and the creatures of the sea. How amazing is that? 
alone, knowing that God does exist. God even walked and talked with Adam in the Garden of Eden. God even talked with Jesus up on Mount Sinai. He was there on Golgotha, where Jesus, his son, was being sacrificed, being crucified on the cross for our sins. We as man, because he was sacrificed, because we doubted in the existence of God and Jesus Christ, because of our doubt, we don't feel like we need to acknowledge what the truth is. We just need to be able to understand and just ask for the wisdom of King Solomon or for any of the wisdom from the disciples. But we just ask God for our own understanding and just sit there and say, pray, thank you, Lord, for giving me the knowledge that I know today that lets me see the light that you put in my heart. I may see the greatness, the goodness that you instill in me and all of my friends. Thank you for letting me have the family that I have. Even though some issues might arise, it might be tough. But I tell you what, there is one person that's there, and he is called the Comforter. His name is Jesus Christ and God. He is there. He knows. He exists. Because it's the truth. And I will stop there before I get out here yet. And I will say that for our next part of the lesson, our attachment to Jesus Christ.